morning guys we are here today with the brand new Samsung Galaxy Mega 6.3 now as the name 6.3 suggests this guy has a massive 6.3 inch screen now you must be wondering whether you actually need a smartphone of that size or whether smartphones are now really stressing beyond the size that they should be let me tell you this guy is a very important product line for Samsung for two reasons number one the Galaxy Tab 2 was very popular also as a phone which must have prompted Samsung to have a device that is slightly less in size, slightly, slightly smaller in size than the Tab 2 but with much more smartphone like features like let's say the Galaxy S4. Number two and between you and me it could be testing the water for Samsung for the possible upcoming Galaxy Note series which could well stress beyond 6 inch. Yeah. So in this review video we are gonna unbox it, we are gonna take a look at the hardware, the software, the user interface, the apps, we are gonna talk about the performance, the photography, multimedia etc and what not and at last hopefully we will be able to tell you whether your apprehension about the size is correct or you should definitely give it a go. So let's get started, yeah? The box in which the Samsung Galaxy Mega 6.3 comes is fairly compact for the phone's size and it's exactly similar to the box that we've seen with the Galaxy S4. Now, this is made of totally recycled paper, even the words, even letters here all the prints that you've seen are of soya ink which is recyclable so that's something green from Samsung so you've seen that's the device nothing much on this side it's the black color yep so there you have the accessories and the marketing informations the MRP here 31490 but I'm sure you might be able to get it for a lot cheaper uh, from some online retailer or from your local vendor you have some quick specs here yeah so we're gonna open the box now so let's go ahead and cut the thing and open the box yes so there you have and here you can see the box could have been smaller yeah so we'll come back to the device later we'll go further in and there we see some quick start guide and then your warranty card some important customer information and some environmental and SAR certificate informations then we have the micro USB data cable then we have the earphones of course which has gold plated audio jack a gold plated one is better than the silver plated one because it filters the sound better you have your noise cancelling earbuds you, know? you have the controls the volume rocker and the call control here then you have extra earbuds three pairs for different size of air canals then you have the USB wall adapter and then the massive battery it is uh, let me check 3200 mAh battery so it's 100 mAh more than the Galaxy Note 2 yeah so that's about it and the usual stuffs really so there we have the Galaxy Mega 6.3 it's massive but surprisingly it's very light I know it's not it does not include the battery as of now but it's pretty light considering the size actually so let's go ahead and remove this and again not radically different from the other galaxy series of smartphones in fact it's strikingly similar to the galaxy s4 those of you who could not afford the galaxy s4 or could have afforded but the screen sizes for some reason is too small for you then this guy looks strangely similar to the Galaxy S4 which is a very good thing because we've loved the Galaxy S4's design and build quality which we'll talk about about this guy just in a while. If 
if you're one of those who believe size does matter this guy is perfect a 6.3 inch screen the whole body looks huge it also feels huge it hardly fits in your hands it almost looks like it's made for those yetis and bigfoots but then if you think that bigger size necessarily translates into the best of specs which has been happening till now then you might not be necessarily correct because these guys aim at the premium mid-range rather than the flagship product line now it's a good thing because uh, the flagship line is getting a little crowded right now and uh, the premium mid-range is actually wide open i'm talking about the international premium mid-range which um, you know goes starts from around 25k and goes up till about 32 33k at that range it has the perfect specs to fill in a uh, perfect price to fill in it almost has the flexive specs of last year 2012 now specs wise this guy is powered by 1.7 gigahertz dual core great cpu it has a qualcomm snapdragon 400 chipset uh, 1.5 gb ram uc 6.3 inch lcd super clear lcd screen and it has an hd display but not full hd so that translates to about 233 bpi 3200 mh battery that's a monster 8 mp back camera 1.9 mp front camera this guy has 16 uh, gb of internal storage you also could get an 8 gb version in future or in market presently um, it supports micro sd card and it can fill in up to um, 32 or 64 gb of external storage we haven't tested that yet so as you see it has very decent specs to be a premium a mid-range device now let's look at the body and you'll see that it has striking similarity with the galaxy s4 if you have seen it it has the same texture as you can see as the galaxy s4 also on the back the same squarish texture yeah there you can see and it looks almost identical from the front as well as from the back side now the front side is dominated by the 6.3 inch super clear lcd again as i told you it has an hd screen not full hd so 1280 by 720 pixels which translates to a pixel density of about 233 ppi which is rather low for a handset i'll tell you but then if samsung had gone for a very high resolution and let's say led screen also then probably this guy would have costed an arm on top you have the earpiece the notification slides and sensors and then you have the 1.9 mp front camera that records at full hd you have the very familiar home button and the design of this is also exactly similar to that of the s4 you see the diamond edge cut and then you'll have a back button here and a menu button here both would be soft keys on the left hand side you have the volume rocker on the right you have the power button on top you have the IR blaster there because this guy also acts as an universal remote control you have the noise cancelling mic the 3.5 mm jack below you have the micro USB port and your mouthpiece yeah on the back side you have the 8 MP autofocus camera which also obviously records at full HD you have um, the LED flash the Samsung logo and then your speaker grill now very good thing in all these devices is that the speaker grill there you see it has a little bump so even when you place this device on a flat surface the sound output is not obstructed because it's bumped so this this guy hit the surface and there is still space for the sound to come out properly good ergonomic thinking now we love to hold the galaxy s4 this guy also is good to hold if you can hold it actually because it totally depends on the size of your hand i have tiny hands so it's really really difficult for me to hold this device and operate this device with one hand in fact i can either hold this device or operate this device with um one hand so most of the time be assured you're gonna be using both of your hands essentially one hand to hold it and one hand to operate it uh, you know forget 
operating it with one hand all this it of course has features like um, you know where you can one hand operation where you can make those keyboards smaller than other stuff but even then it would be very shaky and dangerous actually to operate this guy with one hand yeah <coughs> so again as all galaxy guys have the mega 6.3 also has a removable back cover which is again made of polycarbonate or high-end plastic as you can call it then it has this 3200 mAh battery it has a single micro sim slot and then a micro sd card slot above now we don't understand you have so much space around why did they sandwich um, this two card and you know squeeze them into the same slot now you can of course take out the micro sd card without taking the battery out but you need it to work hard and really you know takes practice actually there you see but there is no way you can take out the sim card and that's okay because we've actually seen them that way only if it had a second sim card then probably you could have taken it out who knows but that's how the backside looks at the speaker yeah so as you've seen it's not radically different body it's almost similar to most of the galaxy devices and in particular to the galaxy s4 those i'm gonna show you when i show you the software so let's concentrate on the hardware right now yeah so again the camera has this slight bump but then we'd have liked the edges to come out a bit more to uh, protect the glass from getting scratches whenever you keep it on a surface it's not exactly that it's almost the edges are almost similar in fact the glass is the one that's most protruding so if you you know you need to really take care of how you place the device here because it will straight away hit the glass there and so all in all great build quality we love the design because we of course love the design of the galaxy s4 although this guy is huge at 199 gram it sounds like a heavy device but consider the weight it's 6.3 inch device 8 mm thick and for that for that 199 gram it does not actually feel that heavy if you consider that you're holding a 6.3 inch device you know and uh, and compared to a, your usual 5 inch or 5.5 inch device considering that this guy is not that heavy but of course it's not featherweight either so that's about the hardware the front side is very glossy as usual you'll see a lot of fingerprints out there but overall a beautiful device but I think a tad too large even for a phablet category let's talk about the gorgeous display of the galaxy mega 6.3 now as i told you before as the name 6.3 suggests it obviously has a 6.3 inch diagonal screen it's a super clear lcd not amoled mind you and it has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels that's hd most of the flagship nowadays come with a full hd um, resolution and on a much smaller screen so they would look better in terms of color depth and sharpness but then let me tell you this guy is not aimed at flagship this is more like a premium mid-range device now uh, those resolution on this screen translates to about 233 pixels per inch you might think that's pretty average but then amazingly on this super clear lcd technology the screen looks very bright as you can see bright i have the brightness level set to half and even then you see a pretty sharp and gorgeous display actually and the viewing angles for an lcd are amazing there you see you can almost make out all the letters even from here of course you can't blame samsung for having an lcd that's 
reflective because LCDs are supposed to reflect a lot more than the LED screen so you have all these reflections out there which actually cut down the viewing angle a bit because the moment you come here the viewing angle actually is alright because you can still read the letters there but the screen becomes reflective so if you have a lot more words like if you're reading a web page or something that it might become illegible there you see the moment the reflection takes over the text part it becomes illegible but actually if you do not have if you're like looking at it um, at a totally dark room or where it does not have this light reflection you would clearly be able to see the letters so a very very good display I would say and 6.3 is maintaining this kind of a display is really a feat now let's check out the user interface and I'm gonna switch on this device you need to press yeah you see the model number GTI 9200 the Galaxy Mega 6.3 yeah so it starts up pretty quick but you should wait for some time for all the startup elements to load now again if you have seen the Galaxy S4 you've almost seen the Galaxy Mega 6.3 but if you haven't seen um, then let's talk about it now again this guy is powered by Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean that's the latest one and it has a customized TouchWiz UI on top you can add widgets on the lock screen now so you can have your clock again and then you also can have your most used apps here and then you can also add apps from here or delete those by going to the edit button hmm? You can also edit your personalized message here. So you can have your personalized message and then jazz it up with cool fonts and colors and stuff. Now, the lock screen supports two kind of unlocking animations. Now, the new, there you see the glow kind of, and then you also have the familiar floating kinds. It also supports air view, there you see. Yeah. So let's go ahead and unlock quickly. And you get to the very familiar Samsung TouchWiz UI home screen. You can all also add or remove home screens out there. And you've seen there's a slight lag because after all, this guy is powered by a 12 core processor and has the has the latest UI, so it's bound to lag just a bit because every time you're doing an action, it's a new instruction. Even when you're turning the device around talking of which you now have a totally revamp UI when you're holding the device in landscape position now all these are separate instructions now when I'm when it's in landscape mode and then when I turn it into a portrait mode it has to kill that particular instruction and start a new instruction now all these instructions handled by a 12 core processor and 1.5 GB RAM on a 6.3 display takes some time yeah you'll quickly get used to all this but otherwise you see the typical widget laden home screen also you probably would not have so many widgets on your home screens so it would be much faster even now you see there is no lag once the startup items all load it's pretty fast even for a dual core processor there you see almost moves at the speed of your finger you know? So you can long press and you can add uh, your wallpapers, apps and widgets, folders, page and whatnot. You have your favorite app doc that can be customized and you can also drag it to this plus sign to create a whole new home page. Yeah. You can also delete it by going to remove. You can also create folders on your home page and then keep other things. So there can go you can create folder here you can name it anything and then you can practically drag your icon there and there you're on the folder you see yeah. you can also drag them out anytime drag the last app out 
and the folder will disappear there you can create folder practically this almost the same option when you long hold on the home screen but you have the full settings here you're gonna take a look again the Galaxy X4 style horizontally aligned main setting menu so this guy has most of the features of the Galaxy S4 minus some premium features so for example do not have Wi-Fi direct and all stuff but you have NFC S beam you have DLNA screen mirroring then in my device you have uh, there you see some of the things like you have air view smart screen you have a lot of motions there then uh, you have your safety assistance that came with the galaxy s4 and that we loved although how practical it is will depend on the situations but yeah it is useful to have something than nothing and it's good to know that some manufacturer is doing something you know they're just thinking a little out of box and giving you some tools that just could become handy if you get used to it yeah safety assistance is very very useful app when you're probably being stalked or when you suddenly feel a danger so just just by tapping the volume up and down button together three times you can send a message um, along with the photo of whoever is talking you to uh, whoever is talking you to your known person a number that you can give you so that they know where you are and they know that you probably need help yeah. so the lock screen has all these options you can have your favorite shortcuts and then you, ha you can have multiple widgets then again all these fancy kinds of waking up the device then you have daydream that also came with the galaxy s4 you have increased legibility of the fonts now you know that this guy has a pretty long ui so you'll see almost all the fonts here are kind of stressed a little longer than the usual so you in gallery the g you'll all you'll see all the fonts a little taller than you'd see the fonts on probably um on the s4 or on the galaxy note 2 yeah that's my device quickly you can have all these accounts more and let's go to about device and you can have they see android 4.2.2 the model number gti 9 double i 9200 and then your bill numbers so that's about the settings now let's go to the app deck and see so Samsung has done a very good job not to include a lot of bloatwares that means a lot of third party apps that you do not necessarily need. So in the UI you'll basically have the native Google apps like uh, Chrome, you'll have all the maps family like local navigation maps um, then you have the Google Plus family like Messenger Plus, Google Plus then your google search you'll have youtube hangouts and all stuff yeah but it also has most of the apps that you would get on the galaxy s4 from samsung that means the in-house apps which are perfectly integrated into the room uh, the chat on which has been around for long of course and then you have um, the group play you have play movies s memo s translator which again was a feature of the galaxy s4 s voice uh, samsung app samsung link you have story album again a new feature watch on again a new feature yeah so not many third party apps there are of course some long standing apps like flipboard and uh, trip advisor is of course a new partnership yeah so not many third party apps is what we like so there is not much bloatware in the ui in general but then there are a lot of in-house apps to top it up and you you might find all of these um, useful at times some of which you would need and some of which are just you know kind of um, peripheral pleasure now one app we really missed on this is the s health 
which wa uh, which was there on the Galaxy S4, but it isn't here now. S Health is a really really cool and useful app um, to track your steps, your diet, and a kind of a um, you know walk toward having a better health. And that's that we found really really useful on the Galaxy S4, and one of the most notable apps that you need on a daily basis. So we would have liked that app to be here. Yeah, you have the widgets lined up. You see you can long hold on any widget and drag it to any any of the home pages there. You can also delete it. Yeah. Now I have some extra home pages so I can just simply go and remove this. Yeah. we're gonna take a look at some of the apps now so let's start with the calculator and we absolutely love the design of the keys they're given a nice subtle 3d design that makes them look like those actual rubber buttons on your um, actual calculator even when you press them they look like you're pressing a rubber key although they don't feel that way pretty cool and then you have the camera as I told you before this guy has an 8 MP rear camera 1.9 MP front camera both records at full HD 30 frame per second and the UI borrows heavily from the galaxy camera you have those modes here laid out you have some usual popular modes and then some modes that came um, on the S4 like the sound and shot then you have HDR, panorama, sports, night, beauty face, best face, continuous shot etc. Then you have some quick function toggles here and then your detail settings so your photo size is 8 MP in 4 by 3 aspect ratio if you shoot widescreen you'll have to come down to 6 MP. Then you have face detection metering again 3 methods, uh, center weighted metrics and spot then we have anti shake on you should have it too iso is auto because i am in the auto mode then you have the video resolution again see full hd 1920 by 100 1080 pixels you have gps tags and white balance yeah. timer we wish it has uh, we wish it had a custom timer then you have storage and all those stuffs, the usual settings. So the memory card here uh, denotes that all the images and videos are getting saved on the micro SD card. Yeah. But then when you take a continuous shot, note that the burst shots will be saved on the storage because the writing speed of the built-in storage is much faster than um, the micro SD card and it would have more buffer to accommodate the quick burst shots yeah then the gallery and again a very familiar look your photos are arranged according to the albums you can have them sorted by these means there is also a spiral with a pretty nice animation there yeah but i'll go back to my sorting according to album where you can multi-select albums and then share them by all these means you can also go inside one album and then multi select photos and then delete them or share by these means now we love the way the albums and photos are sorted in a kind of an explorer way so that you don't have to go back to go to another album simply click on any album there you go and when you click on one photo two photos and when you try to drag it to another album it's almost kind of you know clubbed it together looks very cool yeah. you have the group play option where you can have the same thing playing on multiple similar devices you have the browser again very familiar Samsung browser meant for Jelly Bean does not support flash playback because of course it's Jelly Bean and Jelly Bean does not support flash playback out of the box you can create new tabs from here. You see, it 
takes advantage of the bigger screen yeah. then you have all these stuff so you can force a desktop view you can go to settings and do some other things yeah you can set bookmark and then so set your histories and all the stuff you have the music again exactly the similar way it is since the Galaxy Note 2 and much of which is similar to the Galaxy S3 what we liked about this tab is folder option it's not in many smartphones mind you then there you see there's a song you can favorite it you can randomize it and you can go to settings to have some presets on they work pretty well I'll tell you we'll come back to the output and other performances later it has a file explorer there yeah. then what else play movies hmm? and S memo all pretty similar there's nothing much to show about there's no special new things that I want to show you S planner same you have S translator which is a new feature that came in with the Galaxy S4 for example when you enter a letter here tell it to translate to Spanish it tells something I don't understand Spanish so if you're a Spanish then you might not understand that <laughs> it says I am freaky from India <laughs> anyway so you can also um, have your voice speaking the language that it will translate and then you have those revamp icons of Samsung app Samsung links and stuff so Samsung apps almost remain the same yep. then what else? Samsung link yep. and you have your story album that again came with the Galaxy S4 you can create your album with your existing photos or by tag and you have many this thing so I can have all this and then I can set up a theme all these themes let's check out grid and I can select a cover image as well this cover image looks good enough okay and then create an album I will create an album for me now it also should suggest albums whenever I go to one place and click a few um, photos so it will detect that uh, with the GPS that is from the same location and probably should tell one story about my trip so it will suggest albums yeah, so there is a slight lag again exists in the UI transition yeah. then you have third-party apps like TripAdvisor and Flipboards and all kind of stuff stuff then you have the video yeah. voice recorder watch on is uh, watch on is a universal remote control app so you have this IR blaster here yeah. and you can set this remote for various TV um, music system and other electronic system from any brand virtually in the world and you can have this acting as a remote control for this device so that's pretty much about it about all the app it also has some new widgets for example the weather widget now shows a very subtle animation I don't know if you can see this but I can see the cloud just moving and slightly changing the shapes very subtly so let's um, go there and yep it has some nice still animation as well as 
vehicle here you will see the clouds moving there very subtly not as cool as on the sands from HTC but yeah I mean kind of you can live with it yeah so that's pretty much about it about the apps we'll be back with the performance thank you we'll talk about the performance now before going to that you need to understand I'm telling you again and again there are a lot of people now think that a bigger screen essentially translates to the best of cutting edge technology but the Galaxy Mega 6.3 is actually aimed at the premium mid-range segment and it has kind of specs that are more like last year's flagship devices but not this year's of course so it costs only about 30 31 k for that it has a dual core 1.7 gigahertz processor 1.5 um, gb of ram and then it has a nice cool gpu but then not those cutting edge bleeding edge specs that you would expect from a flagship yeah so once we've cleared that let's check out the system it is not laggy when you're just browsing the system but if you have the amount of widgets like I have if you there you see slight lag almost a slight lag and this happens when you load widgets as much as you can on all the home pages this will take out the CPU power from even the flagships but yeah so after all there is a slight lag initially but then you would slowly get used to it and you almost don't notice it now there's it's slight lag when you move around yeah it also shows a bit of lag when you're coming out of an app for example let's go to the browser and let's say I'm checking out National Geographic one of my favorite websites and I go and read about it I add a few tabs here and there and I do a bit of browsing I go I have a fans and I want to come back to my home screen suddenly there you see it just stops for a moment and then comes to the home screen does not instantly come to the home screen uh, it also happens when you're checking out your mails or especially when you're doing some memory hugging or when you're operating some memory hugging apps and then you suddenly want to come back let's say from a game you want to come back to the home screen press the home screen send the game um, to back end background then you would understand that lag yeah the camera so we'll see if it lags in shutter release so almost no lag Specifically, when I'm in continuous mode, because it's saving to the device, it should be even faster. That's incredible. That's, I would say, almost about 2.53 frames per second. Now, let's check out some of the photos that we've clicked, and we'll go to camera and you will see that it renders the colors beautifully almost true saturation true colors there great color depth yeah so you're looking at it on the smaller screen but when you uh, transfer it to a pc there also the colors come out pretty cool because uh, the aperture is not too big or the aperture hole is not too big you don't see much shallow depth of fill there i tried to focus here and you see even these guys kind of don't go too out of focus now let me tell you while clicking portraits especially under low light now it shows a lot of noise now I'll tell you what to do this photo is taken in the auto mode so you see a lot of noise here there you see yeah 
then this photo is clicked in the portrait mode again you see a lot of noise slight difference in the white balance there see this more like incandescent this slightly different there you see the skin tones now let's switch to the low light mode and see the difference there you see and I would say there is still little grains but these are more like grains and not noise so see the difference there so when under low light without any hesitation use the low light um, settings there you'd see you'd see there this is taken with the night shot and then this is the auto mode there's a huge difference of quality so without hesitation use the um, the night mode because it gives great results now on this picture we'll try to see although this lens is not very wide but we'll try to see if it shows any barrel distortion so there is no barrel distortion keystoning here there you see so in keystoning you see the structures going up as if they would march somewhere on top so there is a slight band so you see that keystoning but that's totally expected from this kind of a lens yeah so that's not from this camera so there you see overall the camera is pretty good but under low light it stresses the sensor and it gives out a lot of noise but when you use the low light you see it even perfect the skin tone and when you look at it even on a bigger screen you'll notice the big difference let's play some music now now the output via speaker is loud but not that great on bass you'll see here and, I, and I'm at full volume make sure you're not covering the speaker here So it reduces a bit but the sound still comes can't see the bump in the speaker grill yeah now and it paused because it had this function of whenever you turn the device around it will pause there you see so that's a great motion feature you can go to settings and then you can choose sound alive which will give different kind of a sound output there's the differences some of these are only applicable when you wear your earphones like this like this like this there you see the reflection when you listen to it inside a concert hall so all in all pretty nice sound if you're not too fussy about the bass now when you wear your earphones it's a totally different ball game you have nice crisp deep bass and uh, you know the sound through those earphones are simply awesome because the earphones are that are generally supplied with the Samsung high-end devices like this and the flagships are pretty premium quality they are noise cancelling they have those rubber tips that fits very tightly into your um, ear canal so the sound output is amazing and some of the best that we've heard uh, from a smartphone default earphones yeah now let's see how it plays videos I'm not gonna test 720p because I'm sure it would play that without breaking a sweat but I'm gonna try playing a 1080p video at 30 frames per second that I've recorded with my Canon 700D and you see nice crisp output no fuzziness whatsoever very clear the sound output is coming clearly the colors there is no color loss or there is no focus loss there is no color loss on the edges 
Now we're gonna stretch it further and we're gonna play a 60 FPS video. And you see it starts keeping the frame a bit, just a bit, but this video even breaks down VLC play on my laptop. So this is pretty commendable, but you can see the shaking, you can see the very slight frame rate loss. You see? But still, for most part, it playing it pretty perfectly. Playing a 60 frame per second video is not a joke. Yeah, so pretty commendable video playback performance. So let's check out some gameplay. I'm gonna play NFS Most Wanted, which is one of the most intense games as far as hardware utilization is concerned. Let's get started. It loses a few frame rate there you can see. It's not exactly smooth. Now it seems pretty okay although the frame rate is still low than the highest possible. Especially when I switch on the nitro, stream starts. No, let it hit something and see the graphic. Okay, you see it starts losing frame rate here. Nice. You see it again starts losing the frame rate. The graphics are pretty nice. It utilizes them well. They are not very lifelike. That is, they are not very crisp. Yeah. Now let's talk about whether it's worth your money or not. Now we'll take that part by part. Now first thing is if you absolutely love the screen if, and if you want that size does matter you want a screen as big as possible and you want your device to be able to make call as well you do browsing a lot you watch movies a lot you read books and you know that a bigger screen essentially translate to more virtual uh, state that will give you more space to view your content on uh, in one go then there's no question about this device this guy is just about perfect yeah so uh, you can also choose uh, to have the tab 2 which is a little less price than this guy actually much less almost half of this uh, this guy's price but then tab 2 is a tablet it does not have all the mobile functions all these functions that the 6.3 has and moreover the 6.3 also has the look build quality and many features that comes with the latest flagship that's galaxy s4 which it itself combined with the massive screen is a mouth-watering option now if you're a geek who only talks about the processors and speed and ram and whatnot and don't exactly see how it integrates into the whole system in a holistic view then this guy might fall short of your expectation because you have seen the likes of Galaxy S4 or Xperia Z's and or you have seen the likes of HTC ones and all but again you're getting this device for at least around 10,000 less than those devices you get the 
a biggest screen as of now considering the uh, SN Mate until the Xperia Z Ultra comes which will come with a uh, 6.4 inch screen you have a perfect thing here which has the biggest screen and with just the right amount of specs for you to not get into trouble most of the time only when you stress this which should be like once in a blue moon then probably you would start missing those flagship but then um, at least if if you're not coming from a flagship then you would never have a problem with this device at all if you're coming from a flagship or if you're using this as a secondary device in addition to your flagship then you might see slight difference uh, lags and all those stuff and you know game playing and stuff but then you will learn to get used to it because it gives you that much of space which probably um, your 5 inch device cannot give so this guy is perfect for those who value their screen size the virtual estate more than any of the specs yep and they also want to have some premium features then that they have seen on the galaxy s4 but for some reason couldn't afford that device if you like this video please hit the like button and if you like our videos please subscribe to keep getting this awesome content thank you